In today's video, we're going to be introducing derivatives in Calculus 1. We're going to be going over what derivatives are, what they look like on a graph, and how to solve and find derivatives of any equation. So, let's get started. First of all, let's define what a derivative is. A derivative is an equation that we can find from an original equation that gives us the instantaneous rate of change at any point along a graph. So if I were to have a graph, and I had an equation for that graph, and I were to take the derivative and find the derivative of that graph, I could plug in whatever my point is to my new derived equation and find how that function changes at a given point. This is known as the instantaneous rate of change, and the line that is created at that specific point is known as the tangent line. To help you visualize what a derivative looks like, I'm going to use this graph. This graph doesn't have an equation, but we can use it to figure out what derivatives look like once we solve for them. So at this point, we want to find the instantaneous rate of change just at that point. So the tangent line would look something like this. So the slope of this new tangent line is the instantaneous rate of change at that point on the graph. Same thing can be applied for both of these points. It'll look something like this. Slightly downward in both, and upward in that direction. And then here, our tangent line looks something like this. The slope of these individual lines is the instantaneous rate of change for each of these points along this graph. And we can find an equation that will give us that exact instantaneous rate of change no matter what point we use on the graph. So let's talk about solving them and how derivatives work because I think it's really important to understand what's actually happening when you find a derivative. I've drawn this graph here and in order to understand what's going on in this graph, we need to define the equation that can help us find any derivative. That equation is the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h is equal to our derivative, which can be denoted as d dx or f prime, which is that little apostrophe symbol, x. This equation can find us any derivative of any function. And yeah, it's kind of a mess, but it will solve for any derivative. But what's up with this limit being here? What's actually happening? What do we mean by h approaching zero? You can see that h is defined by the distance between two points on a graph. And as we bring these points closer and closer together, we can get something that's closer and closer to the tangent line at a given point. Let's represent that visually because it's a little bit hard to understand with just a still picture. So let's say we decrease the distance between these points to this. This is now h, not what we had before. This distance is h right here. If we were to draw a line between these two points, that's not really very close to our tangent line, but compared to our tangent line from a second ago, which would look something like this, we are definitely closer to the tangent line for the instantaneous rate of change of this slope. So let's move this point even closer to the point we're looking for the tangent line for, say really right next to it, this distance here, h. If we were to draw a line between these two points, we are much closer to the instantaneous rate of change at this point down here. And if we were to bring these points right up next to each other and draw a line between them, we would get something like that. So as the distance between two points, h, gets closer and closer to zero, we get something that's closer and closer to equaling the tangent line, which is our derivative, aka the tangent line, aka the instantaneous rate of change at any given point. So that's what's actually happening when we use this equation, and that's why we have a limit introduced in this equation in order to solve for tangent lines. But in your classes, you don't have to necessarily explain that, so I think we should try and solve some. Let's solve some basic derivatives together. I'm gonna to leave this equation up here as a reference so we can use it as we solve these equations, but I'm going to erase this so I have a little more room. Before we begin, I wanna re-emphasize something. f prime of x and d dx are the same notation. This just means the derivative with respect to a variable. You'll hear that term with respect a lot as we go through derivatives, so I'll try to make that as clear as possible as we do this. With respect to a variable is more important when you get to multivariable calculus, but basically it means we're finding the derivative for the x variable. When you get into multivariable calculus in calculus 3 and further down the line, we'll take respect to other variables, but for today don't worry about that. We're not doing any of that anytime soon. So let's use this equation to find a derivative. Let's find the derivative d dx of x squared. What is the derivative of this equation? Well, let's plug in this into our equation that can solve any derivative. So first of all, when we have a function f of x plus h, that means we have to replace every x value with x plus h. f of x is just the function, f of x, and h is just h. So let's plug in all of these values into this equation and then plug that into our derivative equation. This can be turned into the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h, which is this equation, but replaced with x plus h instead of just x. So in the numerator, we have x plus h squared. And then here we just have minus f of x, which is just subtracting our function. 
So that would be minus x squared. And on bottom is just the variable h, which we can see right here. Let's bring this equation up here, so that way we have a little more room to work with. So now we'd have the limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h squared. Now remember, this isn't just x squared plus h squared. This is x plus h times x plus h. Don't forget to do that, or else you may get some of these equations wrong. So this is x plus h times x plus h. And that's a very common mistake, don't worry. I just want to point that out in case you didn't realize it. And of course, we just have to add this minus x squared over here and divide that by h. Let's actually multiply these together and foil them out. So now we have the limit as h approaches 0 of x squared plus, x, plus hx plus hx plus h squared minus x squared. And that's all still divided by h. You may notice that we have a few factors that we can combine. First of all, x squared minus x squared is just 0, so we can cancel those out. And hx plus hx can be combined to be 2hx. So this equation is now the limit as h approaches 0 of 2hx plus h squared divided by h. And you may remember when we were solving limit problems, sometimes we can just plug in whatever our variable is approaching to our equation to solve for the limit. But the problem here, of course, is that with just the h on bottom, we would end up dividing by zero. So let's try and cancel something out. There is one thing that we can do to this equation to make it much easier to solve. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out an h. Both this and this have an h that can be factored out. Let me show you what that looks like. So this will now turn into the limit as h approaches 0 of h, I factored an h out, times 2x plus h. So what I did here was I pulled an h out of both of these. If we were to multiply the h by both of these variables, we get 2hx plus h squared. We just pulled it out. We didn't change the value of it at all. And we're still dividing by h on the bottom. Now you'll see that this h and this h will cancel out to just equal 1. So now our limit as h approaches 0 is 2x plus h. And now we don't have to worry about dividing by 0 or anything. We can just plug in h right here. Of course, that's equal to 0. So this derivative is just equal to 2x. That is the derivative of x squared. Now, I know this looks like a lot because this equation, to be honest, is a pain in the butt. But in future videos, we'll talk about how to solve these equations much more easily, especially something like x squared, which is actually very easy to solve without this massive equation. But let's do one more example with this equation so you get the hang of it. You will have to use it every now and then. I also moved our, I also moved our derivative definition up here so that way I have a little more room to work. Let's find the derivative of the square root of 2x plus 3. We're going to plug this into our derivative definition. And I know this is going to take quite a while to solve, but bear with me. It'll help us understand how these derivatives work. So let's just start by plugging everything into here. First of all, once again, we have to replace every x within our function with x plus h. So this now turns into the limit as h approaches 0 of the square root of 2 times x plus h plus 3 minus f of x, which is just our function, the square root of 2x plus 3. And once again, this is all just divided by h. Now, it may look like we're kind of stuck here, but we can use a strategy that we learned about in limits to help solve this problem. You may remember a video where I talked about solving limits by rationalizing, and I'll link it here if you don't. What we can do is we can multiply this function by the conjugate in order to solve this equation. If you don't remember what the conjugate is, let's say we had something like t square root of 2 plus 7. The conjugate of this equation would just be the square root of 2 minus 7. The conjugate of something is just replacing this middle sign with the opposite sign. So if we have addition, we replace it with subtraction. And if we have subtraction, we replace it with addition. We're going to use that concept here to multiply this whole equation by 1. I'll show you what I mean by that. We're going to multiply this by the conjugate of the top. So we're going to multiply this by 2 times x plus h plus 3 plus 2x plus 3. And we're also going to multiply the bottom by that same value, the square root of 2 times x plus h plus 3 plus the square root of 2x plus 3. 
And you'll notice since I'm multiplying it by a fraction with the same thing on top and bottom, it's essentially the same thing as multiplying by one. If we were to divide the top by bottom, we would just get one, so we're not actually changing the value of this equation. On the top, we just need to FOIL everything else. The square root of two times x plus h plus three times itself will just be the same thing, but without the square root. So let's, <laughs> we're gonna need some room. So let's uh, rewrite everything down here. Limit as h approaches zero. On top, we now have two times x plus h plus three. And we're just gonna extend this way out here. We're gonna need a lot of room to solve this. Next, we multiply this by the square root of two x plus three. And that is just equal to the square root of two times x plus h plus three times two x plus three. They're all under the square root, so we can just put both equations under the square root like that. Now let's FOIL from here. We now have minus this exact same value, minus the square root of two times x plus h plus three times two x plus three, like so. And then our last thing to FOIL out is the square root of two x plus three times the square root of two x plus three, which is just equal to, which is just equal to, 2x plus 3. On bottom, we just have to multiply this by h. So let's do that. This is just h times the square root of 2 times x plus h plus 3 plus the square root of 2x plus 3. And yes, that was a lot to do. But fortunately for us, we can cancel out a couple things. First of all, this plus and minus of the same thing will cancel out. Bada bing, bada boom, that's all gone now. So we can now rewrite this equation as the limits as h approaches zero of, and let's FOIL this one out because it's simple, 2x plus 2h plus three, that's what this is. Oh, actually I made a mistake here because if you multiply this negative version and this positive version together, we will remove the square root, but this will be a negative sign. Sorry about that. This is now minus 2x and also minus three. So now we just bring this down as minus 2x minus 3. Sorry for the confusion, just want to make sure we get that right. On the bottom, we have the same thing. That's just h times the square root of 2 times x plus h plus 3 plus the square root of 2x plus 3. Now we got something a little bit simpler. First of all, our positive 2x and our negative 2x will cancel out, and our 3 and negative 3 will also cancel out. Isn't that convenient? So now this equation is just equal to the limit as h approaches zero of on top is just two h, I know, very convenient, divided by h times the square root of two times x plus h plus three plus the square root of two x plus three. Now we're really getting somewhere. And in fact, we have one more thing we can cancel out. We can cancel out this h and this h. So now this is equal to the limit as h approaches zero. And if I go off camera, it's so that way you can see the board because there's a lot here and I don't wanna block any of it, is now equal to two divided by two, oh, sorry, the square root of two, the square root of two times x plus h plus three plus the square root of two x plus three. We are almost there for solving this derivative, but we just have a little bit more to do. We are now at the stage where we can plug in zero for h. So this is now just equal to, instead of h, zero. Instead of rewriting it all, I'm sure you can figure out that h is replaced with a zero. Of course, the zero doesn't actually change anything on bottom. So now we have the square root of two times x plus three plus another square root of two x plus three. So just to rewrite that and make that very clear, this is equal to the limit as h approaches zero, two divided by square root of two x plus three plus the square root of two x plus three. Sorry, that's not supposed to be a parenthesis. That's supposed to look like that and that. And since we have two of them, this equation can actually turn into, oh, forgive me. We actually don't need to write this h approaches zero part anymore because we already plugged in h. So we don't need this anymore. Sorry about that. This is now equal to just two divided by two times two x plus three. And once again, we can cancel these two out. So our final equation and the derivative of square root of two x plus three is equal to one divided by 
the square root of 2x plus 3. And this is our derivative. Now, I know that seems like a lot, and trust me, even for me, as someone who's done this before, this is a lot of writing to do. And fortunately, we have shortcuts that can help us solve these derivatives much faster. We'll get into that in future videos, like I said before, but like I said, I want you to know how much of a pain in the butt this is, so that way you really know your shortcuts, so you don't have to use this equation very often. So that's the last we're gonna talk about these equations, but I do wanna talk about places where the derivative may not exist. Just like in limits, there's places where we can't derive a function. Sure does feel nice to have a clean slate now. Let's talk about where derivatives may not exist. I'm gonna draw three graphs here. And the functions attached to this graph won't be defined. We don't need to define them, I just need to show you the concept. So we have three different xy planes here. Looks something like that. This first graph looks something like this. It's just some sort of upward curve, but bang, there's a hole right there. And it goes on forever and ever from negative infinity to infinity. But if we were to try to find the tangent line at this hole specifically, we couldn't. We cannot find derivatives at holes or discontinuities. Now we could find the derivative at some other point along this line, like let's just say here. We could find the derivative, the tangent line right there. We could find that, that's no big deal. But specifically at holes, we can't because, well, the function doesn't exist there. Let's draw another function that looks oddly similar to this one, but it has a hole right there and also has a point down here. This is known as a removable point because it's within the same plane and we could put it there to make the function continuous, but it has been, well, removed. We can also not find the derivative at this point here. But why? Why can't we find this derivative? It is a continuous point at this very point, right? Well, the big problem is we don't actually know what this tangent line is supposed to look like. We don't know what direction it goes in. We don't know the slope. We don't know anything about it. It could be infinitely many of these lines. I'm just gonna draw a bunch of them to give you an idea that technically this, this tangent line could be any of those. And since we have no idea which one it should be, there is no derivative at this point. If we have infinitely many options, then we have no options. And the last example I'm gonna talk about is, well, I've used this example quite a few times in the past couple of lectures. This equation is y equals one divided by x. As you may be able to tell, we can't plug in zero on bottom for x because then we get one divided by zero, which is does not exist. So we have this big old vertical asymptote here. Now this function does have a derivative. It can be solved, it, can, it does have a derivative, but we cannot find the tangent line at this vertical asymptote. We have an infinite discontinuity at x equals zero. So we cannot find a tangent line, aka the derivative, aka the instantaneous rate of change at this point. We can find it anywhere along these two lines, but not at zero. It is what it is. I know this big definition of derivatives is very scary and made us write a lot of stuff down, but trust me, derivatives are actually pretty easy, but we just haven't used the tricks to solve derivatives more easily. In the next couple of videos, we'll be talking about tricks that can help us solve derivatives more easily, such as the two examples we did today, x squared and the square root of 2x plus 3. If you need more Calculus 1 help, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time.